Today, we're in conversation with Emily Tang, founder of Studio Doozy. This actually goes back quite a long way back. <laughs> um, so originally, I did graduate as a product and industrial designer from Poly U um, School of Design in Hong Kong. And during when I was studying, I've always wanted to sort of learn how to execute uh, my thoughts into a real thing because I've always lived with my grandparents uh, when I was growing up, and I always saw that you know there were always problems where as they age, they start having limited mobility and they start having some problems at home that um, they start needing assistance. And for them, this is something not very dignifying because it's something you know we all used to be able to do. So during those times and those moments, just experiencing it with them and seeing it, um, I've always wanted to sort of help them solve some problems. But at that moment, I didn't have any skills. So that's also why I wanted to follow you to learn product design, just to learn how to execute my thoughts into action. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, what was really great was during my PolyU, I did learn a lot about you know product design, how to get, um, how to do 3D, how to actually make a prototype. Sort of make things a little bit working, but not perfect yet. Um, but that was already good enough for me to sort of prove whether what I want to do can actually help. Um, and then, so for my final year project, I worked on a toilet for my grandfather because he had Parkinson's disease. And you know that project, it wasn't perfect at all. But the great thing is, uh, a lot of people sort of knew about it, and they gave me a, a lot of really good feedback. But I think most importantly, it also gave me that thought that okay, this project was originally for my grandfather, but it somehow turned into a project where it wasn't just a product anymore. It was sort of like a hope for people who were suffering from similar problems as as my grandfather, seeing that oh, you know, there's young people who are willing to do something to help or to help alleviate our problems. So for them, it wasn't really about the result, but it was more the whole process, what what I was trying to do, and that was something that they really appreciated, which also motivated me to keep wanting to generate or keep doing the toilet um, even after graduating. But the thing is, after graduating, I didn't have the confidence because I didn't I didn't know what it takes to put a product into the market. So instead of you know diving straight into creating the product or keep developing the product. Um, I decided to to learn more by working for other people, and then so originally because I've always had the thought of starting my own thing, um, I started working for a startup because I wanted to really learn you know what it takes to to go through a startup. And I also knew that if you work in a startup, you get to experience a lot more than just product design because I really wanted to understand a little bit better about business development, um, people relationships, and things like that. So. That was a really great experience, and that was also where I met my current co-founder, John. Um, and he was actually my art director back then. But what was great was we worked with each other for one year, and that was when we knew, you know, our skills could complement each other very well. He had the same ideas as me, and so we we always had a thought about this. But then it was later on during that same year I got the opportunity to go abroad because of the Hong Kong Design Talent Award to work for one year. And so at that moment, I was like, okay, this is a great opportunity for me to try to apply for a bathroom equipment company mm. um, abroad. Um, just because you know, there's a lot of big brands abroad like Roca, Cooler, and, mm. and Toto, etc. Um, at that moment as well, my partner, he he's actually from Barcelona, so I was asking him, is it okay if you help me write a reference letter, just to in your language, just so that I can see if I can apply to Roca. Very luckily, they they responded, and then they asked me for an interview, and then things just like went on from there. So I got to go into Raqqa, and I learned a lot about. Yeah, it was amazing. It's um, and then during in Raqqa, what was very interesting was that they didn't have an in-house designer. So they actually, it's really interesting because they have a design innovation lab, which is their main lab in next. It's like a little city next to Barcelona, mm-hmm. um, and that was where I was working. But although they called it Design Innovation Lab, they didn't actually have designers inside. It was mainly engineers, and they would outsource the design work to other um, other companies. Yeah, so that's why for me it was very interesting because I was sort of their in-house designer. Um, they didn't exactly know how to explore my role, but it was very nice because they tried. 
And then after giving me like a few projects, they luckily really liked my work. And so they kept giving me more projects. Um, and then even till now, we still have really good relationships. So it's, I think it's great. And then, but the most important is during Rocka, I learned a lot about, you know, how to actually get a product from conceptual stage to its manufacturing stage. And I got to actually experience that whole process. And because of that, I got to see the little details like, you know, what, what are the manufacturing processes or what are the little things that I need to know if I actually need to produce my own toilet in the future. So these are all things that um, it definitely benefited us running this company now through working in Rocka back then, just like having that experience. Um, and then so because I had to come back after one year for, to, to Hong Kong, um, we thought it was sort of that best moment to start what we've always wanted to start because you know at that moment we both needed to find new jobs anyway and we've always wanted to see how our, my design skills and my partner who's who's actually has a background in design but he also started working a little bit more on the whole software development um so he was actually in san francisco for five years where he was working for startups um on sort of the link between the design team and the very hardcore tech team creating tools and software uh, tools for to, to, to be the link between them two. And then so he knows a lot about that. And on top of that, because he was working for startups, he had some experience with startups in general. And then so that's how sort of Studio Doozy started. Um, we both had the same mission to use technology and design to make better products um, for not just the aging community, but for people with different mobility as well. So we, we always call it the all-inclusive products because we're really targeting people of all age and all ability. Yeah, so that's how Studio Doozy sort of started. That is really fascinating. <laughs> you know, in, in the short time that you've been studying, working mm -hmm. in a startup, working in a corporate, and now starting your business, you've collected all the kind of essential pieces to entrepreneurship, <laughs> right? I think, you know, starting with a purpose that matters is everything. I think, mm -hmm. you know, building something for your grandfather. Um, I happen to have a grandmother who's 85 years old, so mm -hmm. I totally know, you know, all the all the products are not working for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. why, why, why is that world designed like this? I don't get it. We, mm -hmm. we should be better. Yeah. Um, and then your sense of hope, you know, I think talking mm -hmm. about hope is really important because mm -hmm. The world's not only about productivity, it's about people waking up to have the courage mm -hmm. to keep on going yeah. um, and to know that other people care enough to have designed something for them um, mm -hmm. in mind. Um, and, and I love your collective experiences in a startup and also mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a rocker, which yeah. I'm <laughs> one of your products. So I am so oh, really <laughs> that they don't have like a designer on their team. And, mm -hmm. and I think all those pieces you know, have, have built towards where you are right now. I'd be curious to learn more about kind of what is Studio Doozy doing mm -hmm. right now? What, mm -hmm. what are you working on? Okay, so for Studio Doozy, so actually we do have three lines of work. <laughs> it does sound very confusing, but our first line, um, which is also how we sort of started, it was more in design consultancy. Um, but again, because our mission was always to create better products to enrich people's lives. Um, even for design consultancy, we focused on entities or organizations that were focusing on healthcare and lifestyle products. Um, so that was uh, our focus mainly. And But because the beginning was a bit rough, because when we came back to Hong Kong, Studio Doozy was a new company. And as you know, it's very difficult for people to, to trust us at that moment. So we really wanted to try to get our you know design consultancy word of mouth out there, but it wasn't working. Um, at that same time, we had the opportunity to go into an incubation program in Hong Kong, which gave us some resources and an office space to focus on the products. Because, you know, we've always wanted to create the product, but we needed money to fund that as well. That's why we started off with design consultancy. But since we got the incubation program, we decided, okay, let's do our own product line plus uh, design cons consultancy on the same path, on the same uh, time. And then, so in terms of our own product line, what we are really doing at the moment is um, we're focusing more on the home space because for us, what we start realizing is that to age better um, for anyone, 
because for us, aging isn't really 60 plus, but anyone is aging. All of us are aging. Um, so to age better, first of all, it needs to start from home. And what we started realizing was, you know, there's one quarter of elderly in Hong Kong at the moment. They fall once a year. And I think it was 59% of the death of elderly are actually directly or indirectly due to falling at home or residencies. So, you know, that's a big problem. And usually even after you fall, even if you don't suffer from death, you do suffer from other consequences because you never really 100% recover. And there's usually a negative um, in terms of psychological and physiological um, consequences that comes with falling. So what we really wanted to do was how do we improve or make sure our home is well equipped for, you know, people of all ages and all abilities to be able to live independently um, and also to empower them to be independent again. And so at the moment we're working in, in terms of our own product line, we have two main products that we're developing. Um, one of it, one of them is a toilet. Um, so this toilet is actually, it's, it's a different name than the first one from when I graduated because the first name was called Libu and it was too difficult to pronounce. No one knew how to pronounce it. Um, so now it's called Violet, the toilet, the, the, the color name, uh, Violet. And basically this toilet, what we realized was, you know, it wasn't only Parkinson's patients with mobility problems that uh, suffer when using the toilet, because when you use the toilet, you actually have a lot of twisting motions, turning around motions, and these could all potentially cause falls and injuries. So, and this applies to, you know, a lot of different people actually the, pro the problem there so we wanted to see how do we make an all-inclusive toilet that can enable more people to go to the toilet safely um, so for us again we really believe that happy healthy aging at home is possible because we do believe everything starts from home in order for uh, healthy aging to happen and these are some uh, problems that we mainly see for a lot of uh, people of different mobility abilities um, and the first thing is space scarcity um, this is a big problem in many places in Asia um, and the second thing is a lot of the existing accessible products that you can put at home normally has a very negative connotations um, for example my grandfather he, he was very reluctant to put any handles any toilet seats um, on into our home because he feels that oh are you calling me sick so a lot of the time what we feel that is they look they make your home look like a hospital and you really need to um and really force them to to allow you to implement it or they have to either have suffered a fall or they also suffered a fall to be willing to implement these products at home so that's also something we wanted to see if we could change and the third thing is um usually our home is not well equipped um, for for people of all ages. So in order to make it equipped, it we have to go through renovations, which requires time and money. So in Studio Doozy, in terms of our own product line, what we're really trying to solve is making sure that, you know, our solutions can work in small spaces. Because if it works in small spaces, most probably it can also work in bigger spaces. Um, the second thing is we do focus a lot on function, but Aesthetics also plays a huge part because not only does the form help to make the user experience better, but at the same time, if it looks good, people who uses it are more willing to use it, they're more accepting, and they feel good using it. And on top of that, family members also don't mind using that same product. So we think that's also really important. And the third thing is, if our products are easily upgradable or, or they require no renovation in order to install at home, then this could also be very beneficial to apply them onto existing homes, for example. Um, so one of the first products that we are working on is called Violet. Um, this is the toilet that was sort of this, it's, it's um, the evolution of my final year project in PolyU, um, the toilet for my grandfather. And it was actually after you know, when we start Studio Doozy, we start doing more user engagement and really trying to understand why that toilet from PolyU wasn't good enough in terms of design. And so after all the user research and engagements, this was sort of where we came up to. Um, and the idea of this toilet is that you have three ceramic, yeah, sorry, you have three modules. 
So with the same ceramic base, you can just change the upper modules so that you don't have to change your ceramic um, you know, when, when you want to make your home well equipped for someone who's older or someone with different ability. So for example, if I need to renovate my home, I can just implement the basic configuration and this looks like any toilet you have at home. And then it's only when I age or someone at home ages or someone requires um, special assistance when going to the toilet, they can, we can easily just switch off the top part and add some handles. Um, and the last one, which is the third configuration, uh, on the right hand side, you can see that on the toilet seat, there's a transfer bench. And on top of that, it also can rotate. And why is this so important, these two new features, is because if you look at figure one, um, this is sort of um, a floor plan of what an accessible toilet looks like. And as we all know, usually accessible bathrooms, they're a lot bigger because what they do is they have a space next to the toilet so that wheelchair users can park parallel to it and do a safe side transfer. But as you can see in figure two, our normal home spaces don't have that space for us. And so we wanted to see how can we allow even wheelchair users, for example, to have a safe transfer even in smaller spaces. And so if you look at figure three, when the wheelchair user enters into the toilet, let's say the toilet, it, the, the actual toilet is on the right hand side. Now they can underneath the transfer bench, they have a locking mechanism where they can unlock the toilet seat and they can rotate it so that the transfer bench is parallel to the wheelchair. And that way now they can do a very safe side transfer, um, even in small spaces. So what we really wanted to do is a toilet that can allow people of different mobility and different age to still use comfortably and safely as well in small spaces. Um, and the second product we are also working on is actually a shower chair that we call Blue. Um, and what we really want to do here is we do a lot of volunteering work as well with elderly in Hong Kong. And they've always been telling us that, hey, like, you know, once as I'm getting older, my flexibility is getting worse. I can't reach certain areas when I shower. And this is something that really affects them emotionally because they want to be able to clean themselves. Um, and for example, my grandfather, because of Parkinson's, he starts needing assistance to shower as well. But this is something that really takes a big hit on his dignity because there's something obviously he wants to have his own private space. And so we decided to design a shower chair where it actually has some jet system um, included. And this way, these jet system can help them wash the inaccessible parts for them, which means that they can still, first of all, be independent, even though they might not be able to reach those area. Um, and also this can empower them to, to be independent and also feel good again and have a better sharing experience when they shower. So yeah, so these are mainly the two products we are focusing on at the moment. But we do want to emphasize that Studio Doozy, as we said, we really want to focus on the home space. So because a product does take a long time to develop, um, eventually for us, if these two products can get out into the market and help more people, this is not it. For us, we have a whole line of product that we still want to create, but this will come um, a little bit later as the years go by as well. And just to just to also have a, give you an idea, for us, you know, as product designers, we understand that what we're creating is for our target end users. It's not for us. And so we're not the type to just stay home and, and you know, keep designing and think that we know everything. We really reach out to our target and audiences. And for us, it's been great because we've always been doing volunteering anyway with um, single elderly that live in Hong Kong. And it is through these volunteering experiences, we also you know, found new things we could potentially do um, to help these elderly. And on top of that, what's really great is they also volunteer for Studio Doozy just because we've already developed a really good relationship with them. It's almost like a family. And after they heard what we do, they're very grateful and they really want to see what they could do, you know, with their experience to tell us what else we can do better, for example. So we also do a lot of user engagement workshops with them just to see um, how we can improve our products. So, so yeah, so this is, this is really what we're working on at the moment. Um, and just to give you an idea of sort of our team, 
Um, I'm Emily, and as I said, I'm I'm from product and industrial design. So I do mainly focus on that part in the company. Whereas my partner Juan, he focuses more on the technical part because he does have more knowledge on software development, uh, coding, programming, and also he has some experience in sort of fixing things because since he was young, he really likes to fix things. So it's great because sometimes. For product designing, we really need to know the mechanisms of certain things to create a good prototype. So that's where we really work together and try to get a working prototype out. Um, and on top of that, we do have some, you know, great advisors that have been working with elderlies. Or, example, we have someone who is on a wheelchair, an advisor who's on a wheelchair, who is also constantly te- telling us what's good and what's bad about our product, telling us what to do. And we also have an occupational therapist who. Who tells us like, hey, actually, your product is not only useful for elderly, but you know, even maybe people with autism or people on wheelchair could also make use of your products. So this is when we realized that you know our original aim was to serve the aging population, but actually, what we're creating could be also serving people of different abilities too. Um. There's a few things. <laughs> It's um, I think because the thing is, I started off as a product designer, and my partner started off as more you know design plus technology. But both of us don't. Although we've been working in startup, it doesn't actually mean we know everything about doing a business or being in a, a business person. So what really had made us slow down a lot was the fact that we had to also learn how to start a business. Um, And I think we never expected. There's so many paperwork, and just like being able to balance between actually working on the product and doing business, like going out, seeing clients. Because our team is so small. If my partner and I are out of the office, the office is basically not working. So, so that really delays、um, what was whatever is happening in our office. And obviously, there is a solution for this, which is to hire a bigger team. But as you also know, probably that hiring is a very difficult process. And right now, we are very lucky. We do have one employee in、um, the office,、uh, one team member.、Um, so now it's a team of three. But it's not enough for us. We still we're still seeking for、um, you know to build a bigger team, just so that even though we're not in the office, everything can still be running. So that's definitely one challenge for us. And the second challenge is. We have the ability to execute our thoughts and to make it into a functional product, but to actually commercialize it, manufacture and commercialize it, that's a really different story. We've had experience, you know, with companies we've been working with, but it's a completely different story when when we're actually doing it ourselves.、Um, so what we've been trying to do is to find the right manufacturer, but that also has been a difficult journey. We have currently been in contact. We're in contact with two to three manufacturers, but also because of what's happening,、um, it's been a little bit difficult to to have a proper conversation with them. So for us, 2020 was meant to be a milestone where we can actually, you know, start putting our products into hopefully production, and then hopefully by end of 2020 to have a product out in the market. But now it seems like our timeline has shifted a little bit as well. But yeah, so finding the right manufacturer has also been a challenge for us, and just also the fact that, again, it's always resources because we, in order for us to have money to sustain our own product line, we also need to make sure we have money coming in, which means we have to be working、um, for other people, design consultancy, and that definitely takes a lot of our time out from our own product line.、Um, so that's why every the whole. Timeline is a lot longer for us to to generate our products.、Mm-hmm. All the challenges you talked about there are, are right on. I mean, but but don't 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 give up because like、mm-hmm. I've met so many founders who basically moonlight. They do their consultancy, their other、mm-hmm. job to fund the、mm-hmm. business that they're trying to grow and build.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's very very typical. And an important part of the startup.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you looking for in a good manufacturer? So for us at the moment, I think it's someone that. Okay, so for us, the manufacturers we're looking for at the moment, they do have. First of all, what's more important is they actually have experience creating.、Um, I forgot the word, like bathroom equipments. 
Mm. So definitely the manufacturers we're talking to at the moment are example toilet manufacturers. Um, and on top of that, we have found one who's actually who actually has a whole product line on elderlies. So bathroom furniture for elderlies. Mm. And the good thing about them is they're not a very big manufacturer, which means that you know it's more family. Uh, it's more like a family rent, run manufacturer, so we feel that they could potentially be someone we could talk to and see if there could be any partnership going on. But um, but yeah, because we reached out during this time, so now we haven't really gotten replies yet. But last year we did visit their factory, and we do you know enjoy the dynamics. So I think this year finally when we're ready, you know there's other problems, and so hopefully I think. These two months, we can reach out to them again. But yeah, definitely people with the experience doing toilet equipment, um, and at the same time, even understanding the elderly market would be great. Yeah, you talked a bit about software as well. Like, what mm-hmm. is your expectation on the software side of your business? Yeah. Okay. So just now, that's true. In the presentation, um, I did take out one slide. Um, actually, for us, for the toilet. We treat it as like a car almost, so it has like upgradable features. And one of the upgradable feature we impl- we're implementing at the moment, and it's actually in our prototype as well, is a handle that can track your health. And why we start doing this isn't because we wanted to be fancy; we wanted to add technology. But it was actually because what we start realizing about elderly is they only start tracking their blood pressure, their weight when they're sick. But this isn't useful because the whole point of doing this is actually to prevent anything from happening. So for us, preventive care is very important. Um, but our society and the way we're educated, somehow we only do it when we're sick. And so the problem also with existing, example, smartwatches, you need to charge them. Elderly usually don't like wearing things, and even if they do, they need to remember to charge it. And so that means if they don't remember to charge it, information isn't flowing every day. Um, And we thought, okay, the toilet is something we're working on, first of all, but it's also something you use three times a day. So if it could be passively tracking your health at the same time, that could be very useful for the family, for the elderly, or even for doctors to be able to know better about their health and recognize if something is going wrong before it actually goes wrong. Um, so in terms of the health tracking that we're doing at the moment, we do have a pulse oximeter, so the heart rate, um, the oxygen level. The temperature. We, we're also implementing weight and also blood pressure at the moment. So these are sort of the basics that uh, we did speak to a few doctors to understand a little bit better what information is important for them to access someone's health. And so they told us these would all be pretty important um, in order to know better. So yeah, so these are sort of what we're working on at the moment in terms of the software side. That's fascinating. I mean, just last night, I, I have a four-year-old daughter. She was like, "Mommy, do do you know if the toilet knows whether I just pooped or pee?" I'm like, "Soon, <laughs> soon, soon it will know." <laughs> well, I think I need to meet with your daughter. <laughs> She will give us a lot of really good insights. <laughs> I mean, we we you know, young people and old people. We spend a lot of time talking about toilets. So at the toilet and talking about what happens at the toilet. So there is a lot of insight there for sure. Yeah,、um, and you know, even Bill Gates. I mean, I was watching his other、mm-hmm. show inside his Bill Gates brain, and he, and he had the whole show about toilets. Yeah, and and you know, I think you know you, you're right on point with the data that can be collected in, in、mm-hmm. this piece of device, and then and all other devices in in a home.、Um, mm-hmm. But you know, to start off with, I think this is a really good starting point.、Um, mm-hmm. Culture, family health. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So after okay, so we got the manufacturing going, and then we got the software piece going. Now, what about distribution? So you worked、mm-hmm. at Fanta, so you sort of have some understanding of how to get a toilet to a consumer.、Mm-hmm. Um, what do you expect your process to be、um, for for Violet? So, example, if so, for both actually for Blue and Violet, it's a bit different. So for Violet、um, specifically, we. Actually, at the beginning, we're, we're targeting B two B because for us, we think that if all the new buildings, obviously, there's a big wish, but if the new buildings are more equipped for the Asian community or people with different abilities, it will be way easier for people to move in and just you know add a few things more. So, especially our toilet, because once you implement the ceramic, everything else can be up to whoever is living in the home. So that's why、uh, we've been very lucky. The first year, we got 
in contact with a few property developers in Hong Kong, where we got to actually show them what we're working on, um, to just tell them, hey, is this something you would be interested in? You know, we've gotten good feedback, but because our product is not in the market or anything, there's never anything guaranteed either. But I think the good thing is we do sort of have an idea. Um, there are a one or two property developers that are interested in creating all age friendly apartments and homes. So those are definitely the people we will target in terms of distribution in the future um, when we come out or when the product is ready. Um, and so, and also we do have contacts with elderly homes, for example. So those are also people we're looking into at the moment. So definitely for Violet, it will be more B2B at the beginning. Whereas for Blue, um, in terms of distribution channel, we're actually talking to a few existing distribution, um, elderly product distribution um, stores in Hong Kong and also in Taiwan, um, just to see if they're interested in such products as well. Mm. Yeah, so these are all in the works at the moment. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I think I think you know working on the B two B route is hard, but mm -hmm. it's going to be a worthy journey because once you're installed, like you said, all your upgrades. Yeah. Can can go in much easier. Hardware mm -hmm. or software upgrades. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If there was one thing that you really wanted to accomplish for 2020, what would that be? Given kind of what's going on in the world. Right yeah, now? I think if there's one thing, it's definitely for us to have the shower chair um, in the market. I know this might sound crazy, but this is something we really want to try to achieve because. Um, the shower chair is something we do feel that a lot of people can benefit very easily, especially because it's something that, you know, you can implement at home. You don't need extra renovation. It's just simple installation. And, you know, you, you're already giving a better ex sharing experience for a lot of the aging or even people with different abilities. So that's definitely our 2020 goal at the moment. Even if it's not out in the market, at least have it in production. Got it. Well, I look forward to buying one in on the shelves very soon. And thank, thank you. you so much for your mm -hmm. sharing today. And we look forward to catching up with you um, later in 2020 to find out, you know, how everything is going on in Studio mm -hmm. D. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you for <laughs>